I'm here to meet students as they take their first step on their journey to SOLIDWORKS certification. It's always good to have it on your resume. It's uh, always a step in front of people that don't have the certification. I think uh, it's better to have the, the certification for the, for the upcoming uh, jobs that I want to do. You always practice on school, but now you have a certification, so now you can prove it. It just really helped me get a job. It got me a lot of job interviews as well. Keyshot is a standalone real-time rendering application that makes the creation of 3D renderings and animations fast and easy. Used worldwide by top design professionals and independent 3D artists working in industrial design, marketing, engineering, entertainment, automotive, architecture, jewelry, and packaging, Keyshot is the complete solution for your 3D visualization needs. Keyshot directly imports over 40 different 3D file formats on both Mac and PC. It offers free plugins for major 3D and CAD applications like 3D Studio Max, Cinema 4D, Rhino, SketchUp, Creo, SolidWorks, Fusion 360 and many more. This enables fast data transfer and continuous model updates through live linking. A drag and drop based workflow makes Keyshot easy to learn in minutes. Materials, environments, backplates and more are easily applied to the scene from the library. Keyshot's real-time rendering everything as it happens. Every change from materials and lighting to cameras and animation is seen instantly. The interface is simple and fully customizable while also providing advanced capabilities for experienced users. Hide the buttons you don't use, scale them as needed, position panels and tabs as you like, and save presets for quick swapping between different layouts. Keyshot's scientifically accurate materials create the highest quality visuals. Select from an extensive library of material presets including plastics, glass, metals, paint, toon and more. Modify any material by changing or adding colors, textures and labels and browse the cloud library for user-generated and exclusive partner assets like Moltec plastics, Exalda paints and Sørensen leathers. For material color you can define your own using various color spaces or use industry standard color libraries such as RAL and Pantone. When full customization of materials is needed, the material graph lets you adjust, combine and mix procedural and bitmap textures in a visual and non-destructive node-based system. The camera is easily adjusted by navigating the viewport. Fine-tune settings through sliders and numeric input and add effects like depth of field in the camera tab. Save any number of cameras for quick toggling between different angles and camera setups. Spherical HDRI environments make lighting setup easy. Drag interiors, exteriors and studio setups into the scene or to the environment list for quick swapping between different setups. For full custom control, the integrated HDRI editor lets you add and adjust any number of lighting pins and bring them into perfect position by pointing on the model. For additional control, physical lights provide scientifically accurate simulation. Visualize scenes with simple settings that create the most accurate lighting from studio shots to the most complex interiors. Easily add animation to engage your audience with simple turntables, dynamic exploded views, dramatic camera path and much more. Keyshot XR brings the advantage of plug-in free touch enabled web content to desktops and mobile. Final images can be saved as simple screenshots or rendered at any resolution to the most common file formats including JPEG, PNG and TIFF 32-bit. For ultimate post-processing control, renderings can be exported as 32-bit Photoshop files with a wide range of passes in separate layers including global illumination, reflection, shadow, ambient occlusion, clown, depth and more. When more CPU power is needed, Keyshot Network Rendering allows you to take advantage of your network's computer resources for rendering. After the simple installation process, any user with Keyshot can send a job to be rendered on the network. The jobs are organized into a queue that all users can view. 
Compatible with PC and Mac, Keyshot uses 100% of available CPU power. No special graphic card is needed and all CPU power scales linearly for unmatched performance. Download your free trial at keyshot.com try to see why it is the preferred choice for high quality rendering and animation at companies such as Fossil, Microsoft, Samsung and more. Hello, my name is Rapalos Grazis. I am founder and creator of modern custom instruments called Lava Drops. Uh, my main profession is industrial designer and I am focusing on exclusive product creation. Uh, my name is Ignaz Survela and I am CEO and founder of the company CityBirds. While I was studying in Vilnius Academy of Arts and Master's degree, the main tool of 3D creation was SolidWorks. Firstly, I heard about uh, SolidWorks software when I was a student in Vilnius Academy of Arts. Uh, I, was, uh, I was studying industrial design, therefore uh, SolidWorks was the, one of the best solutions to, to start working with uh, industrial design. The, uh, the Pigeon Kickscreer was uh, the bachelor project uh, of mine. Uh, it was uh, the bachelor project I made uh, at Vilnius Academy of Arts. I think the favorite part of SolidWorks is accuracy before prototyping and very quick rendering. Since I was a student three years ago, uh, I needed to learn everything by myself, so SolidWorks actually was one of the hardest part for me because I'm industrial designer, not, uh, not engineer. But today uh, we created a company and uh, we have employed uh, different uh, engineers who are really professionals uh, from, from that kind of engineering field. Therefore, they're using the software more and uh, uh, they, are, they are super happy about that because uh, it's, it's much, much easier to, to work with. Uh, Venusat Academy is... Uh, students are very happy to uh, to use uh, so software SOLIDWORKS. It is a uh, very good, very precise and uh, efficient uh, software program for designers who are, who are creating uh, different kind of, uh, of designs. It's really helping not only to implement their ideas, but even to create the ideas. Uh, so there's uh, quite a few successful projects uh, that have been completed using SOLIDWORKS. One of them is uh, an interactive uh, lightning system. Uh, it's like a moving lamp on a ceiling. You can control it using your, uh, with your Android phone. Uh, all of the parts were designed by using SOLIDWORKS. So it was also very convenient because when all of the parts arrived uh, to the student, uh, all he basically had to do was design everything together, to assemble everything together and it looked uh, really nice, the design was very nice and he could uh, avoid many of the problems by planning and designing everything in the virtual space and not waste money by producing many of the parts and just testing it out. Okay, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everyone, to anywhere, wherever you are in the world. So in a few minutes, we are about to begin for uh, multi-body modeling in uh, SolidWorks. So giving you a, a few minutes to register, so sharing the registration link. Okay, so it's now on the ticker below. Okay, giving you five minutes more to uh, register. Okay, and I'll be uh, leaving you uh, for now a uh, video to thank our partner, uh, Student Organization. So once more, giving you five minutes to register for multi-body modeling in SolidWorks.
Okay, so once more, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I would like to thank our uh, partner schools. Okay, and before we begin uh, inviting you uh, to those who are interested to learn about uh, Photoshop, Premiere, After Effects, Illustrator, inviting you to join our uh, friends in Adobe Community Philippines. Okay, so yep. In addition, inviting you to join us, to support us. If you think this live stream is uh, beneficial to someone you know, please uh, invite them to join us on our, uh, invite them to subscribe and like our YouTube channel. It's SolidWorks Users uh, Philippines. We are also in LinkedIn, having the same name, SolidWorks Users uh, Philippines. Okay, and of course, we are also in uh, Facebook. Okay, our Facebook group, inviting you to join us here as well and to like our page, okay? So once more, highly suggesting you um, subscribe to our YouTube channel to be updated of our upcoming live-streamed uh, training. Okay, so without further ado, let's uh, begin first uh, the formalities with the PSME Prayer Anthem Creed. And the, and the Philippine National Anthem. PSME Prayer Heavenly Father, Maker of Heaven and Earth, we thank you for the Filipino Mechanical Engineer, for our profession, and for our organization, the PSME. You have sown us as seeds, scattered here and abroad as PSME engineers, humble planners, designers, and builders of all things mechanical our proud testament to the glory of your creation. We bring before you the fruits of our profession, forged by the fire and burning passion of the PSME mission. Professionalism, to help us maintain the integrity of the engineering profession. Please keep our hearts true to the highest ethical principles of our field. Service, to enable us to contribute to the enhancement of science and technology. We pray for all Filipino mechanical engineers to work together as one in shaping the economic growth of our country. Motivation, to uplift the engineering profession Please help us promote fellowship and cooperation among all Filipino mechanical engineers and to instill nationalism among PSME members. Excellence to enable us to become outstanding PSME members. We pray for all Filipino mechanical engineers to actively contribute to the advancement of the profession to be recognized globally as we develop the talents you have given us. Help us to provide sustainability to the changing world. May the PSME bring together all Filipino mechanical engineers and as one, stand united as beacons of strength and stability to the world. All this we pray through you, our Heavenly Father, forever and ever. Amen.
the PSME Creed. We, the mechanical engineers of the Philippines, conscious of our responsibilities to God, our country, and our fellow men, affirming our adherence to the Code of Ethics for Mechanical Engineers, desirous in participating and contributing in the social, economic, and industrial growth of our country, determined to support one organization that shall embrace the mechanical engineering profession, have resolved to unite to accomplish these aims by constituting a national organization of mechanical engineers. PSME Core Values I am a person of integrity. I act with honesty, transparency, and accountability. I do the right things the right way. I maintain professionalism at all times with high respect for others, observing proper conduct, following the code of ethics, honoring commitments, and acting fairly and with dignity. I strive for excellence, thereby achieving the highest standard of performance in all my undertakings. I internalize teamwork. I act with sense of urgency, mindful of entrepreneurial spirit and work with unity, cooperation, collaboration, synergy, and convergence towards a common goal. I exercise leadership with humility and characterized by stewardship. I lead by example, walk the talk, and celebrate success as owned by all members of the team. I embody concern for stakeholders, especially the welfare of our members, employees, and all we work for, and those who work for us. I am an integral part of a resilient, nationalistic, and God-fearing organization. I weather the odds and implore peace, harmony, kindness, good work, love of country, and social responsibility. Okay, so once more, good evening everyone. My name is uh, Joe Mark Bakiran, so I will be your uh, instructor for tonight. Okay, so furthermore, if you have questions after this uh, live stream, uh, feel free to uh, connect with me, uh, to message me in uh, LinkedIn. Okay, so without further ado, let's now begin. Uh, opening now, uh, showing you SolidWorks. Okay, so this assembly was made, of course, initially through a sketch. So notice here, I have a uh, single SolidWorks part consisting of seven uh, bodies. So once more, the topic uh, this evening is multi-body. Once more, I'm showing you. These are multi-body in a part, okay? And from here, we will turn this into a dynamic assembly, okay? So let's now begin. Let me quickly restart SolidWorks. Okay, back in SolidWorks. In the welcome screen, let's create a new part, heading over to new, and I'm going to double click part. Okay, our next intent is to insert that DXF file into SolidWorks. But first, let's select a plane which will serve as its destination. I prefer the right plane. Left click on that. Heading over to insert. Going down under DXF. And on your exercise files, I want you to select multi-body.dxf. Double left click. Next, I prefer to import to part as 2D sketch. And I want you to disable import as reference. Selecting finish. 
And if you are not yet familiar with sketching, highly suggesting you check out this course in the library. I prefer having a larger screen real estate. Let's hide our task a pane. And to do that, let's head over to view under user interface and let's disable task pane. Let's start adding dimensions, heading over to sketch tab, selecting smart dimension. Let me define the length of this vertical line to be 80. Next, selecting this vertical line and the center point, leaving this to 15. Smart dimension still active, selecting this center point and the center point. This one to be 50. The center point and this vertical line to be 30. So notice I'm still retyping that value just to make sure. Selecting this vertical line, this one to be 33 this line to be 170 hitting enter this line to be 50 hitting enter the diameter of the circle to be 20 length of this line to be 80 diameter of the circle to be 5 Next, I prefer the diameter of the circle to be 35. And uh, moving forward, let's add relations. I'm going to hit escape. Let me start out by selecting this line to be vertical. This line to be horizontal and in addition, let's turn on the visibility of those relations by heading up under this uh, drop down and selecting view sketch relations. Notice the appearance of this green boxes having the relations. Moving forward, selecting this vertical line, this one to be vertical, this line and this line holding control to be perpendicular okay so let's continue adding relations and once more shout out to our friends in Benildian industrial designers bind let me focus on this uh, circle so selecting this circle left click heading over to our feature 3 holding control and selecting origin and we're going to add a coincident relation zooming out let's check the placement of our support let me grab this line left click and hold to determine what needs to have a relation I'm going to hit undo and select this vertical line, add a vertical relation. In addition, let's add a dimension, hitting S. And selecting smart dimension, selecting our origin or the center point of that circle. Selecting this line, a value to be 23. Double click our mouse wheel to zoom extents. Hitting escape, checking, hitting undo. Let's add a tangent constraint between this arc and this line. Selecting tangent, same with this arc and this line, holding control to select them both. Selecting tangent. Inspecting the sketch coincident with our origin. So with our center point selected, I'm going to hold control and select our origin. Selecting coincident. And 
I'm going to select this relation and hit delete. Let's zoom out. Next, I want this arc and this circle to be concentric. This point and this point should be aligned horizontally. Let's now check. Selecting this center point, left click and hold and moving this point. From here, we now have an insight on what our assembly will be based on creating a sketch with relations. Let's continue adding relations, selecting this circle, this circle, and this circle. And this three, I want them all to have an equal diameter. Same also with this circle. This circle, this circle, and this circle. I want them all to be equal in diameter. Next, let's turn this lines, this line and this line and this line to be a construction geometry. And uh, this sketch over here represents the shaft, which is uh, this line having a length of 170 millimeters. So let me select this line and this construction geometry. I want them both to be equal in length. Let's zoom in and define the dimensions of this shaft. Let's hit S on our keyboard, selecting smart dimension, selecting this line and this line, placing our dimension here, hitting enter, same with this line and this line, placing our dimension here, hitting enter. Lastly, this line and this line, left click here to place the dimension, hitting enter. And holding control to select this three dimensions, and head over to our properties, selecting this symbol to identify these are all diameters. Hitting enter and left click. Let's zoom extents. Let's inspect the sketch of this shaft. So notice we need to apply relations once more. Selecting this line, let's turn this into a construction geometry. Select this line, hold control, selecting this line, and finally the construction geometry. Let's make them symmetric. Same with this line, this line, and the construction geometry. Selecting symmetric. This line, this line, and finally the construction geometry making them symmetric. Let's inspect. Selecting this point and uh, this line. Let's have them coincident. Let's zoom out. Same with this point and this line, making them coincident. Let's inspect this uh, point as well. With this point selected, selecting this line, making them coincident. This point and this line to be coincident. Inspecting, making this line to be vertical. Let's add dimension, hit S. Selecting smart dimension, let's define the distance between these two lines to be 15. This line and this line to be 1, 4, 5. And this line and this line obviously to be 25. Okay, so I'm going to hit undo, inspecting once more, 
So notice we need to apply a horizontal constraint on this construction geometry, selecting make horizontal, inspecting, moving forward. I want this endpoint and uh, this vertical line coincident with each other. Selecting make coincident. Let's inspect our sketch. Let me grab this endpoint. Looking nice. Let's zoom extends. Okay, so we're making a uh, progress. Okay, with the sketch in place, let's now create the bodies. Let's now head over to Features, selecting Extruded Boss Base. We are now prompted to select a sketch or an existing sketch. Selecting this line. And let's change the direction to mid-plane. I prefer this having a thickness of 2. Zooming in. And under the sketch contours, I prefer deselecting this circles. And finally, selecting the green check mark. So I'm right clicking, selecting OK. And notice on our design tree, we now have a folder containing one solid body. Moving forward, I want to tear out and remove this toolbar. Left click and hold and closing this one out. In addition, I would like to update our sketch to have a hole here. So let's head back to our design tree, selecting sketch one and let's edit this sketch. Zooming in, and under sketch, let's create a new circle. Let's place its center point here. Left click, hitting escape. And I want this circle to be equal in diameter with this circle. So selecting equal, and let's exit out of this sketch. And back to Boss Extrude 1, selecting Edit Feature, heading over to Selected Contours, left click here, and let's deselect or select this circle and selecting the green check mark. So notice we now have an additional hole. Let's create another body, heading over to our Sketch 1. Let's turn on its visibility, selecting show. Head over to our solid bodies folder, selecting boss extrude one, and uh, turning off its visibility, hitting S, and selecting extruded boss base, selecting this line. Notice this is now enabled as a thin feature. So let's disable this. And I want to clear out this selection or simply selecting delete. Left click here and left click, left click, selecting this contours. Heading over to directions, selecting mid plane, once more thickness to be two and hitting enter. Notice this time we now have our second body which is now boss extrude two. Moving forward, let's create our shaft. And the tool to be utilized here is the revolved boss base. And notice our axis of revolution needs to be a solid line. So let's head back to our sketch one. Let's edit that sketch. Selecting this line, turning this back to a solid line. 
Exiting out of this sketch, let's now select Revolve the Boss Base. Selecting this line, heading over to Selected Contours, left click, and select this contours. Selecting the green check mark, zooming out, and let's turn on the visibility of Boss Extrude 1. And as quick as that, we have created multiple bodies in which later on will become parts in SolidWorks. Moving forward, let's create the pins for these holes. Head back to our design tree and we are going to turn off the visibility of these three bodies. Let's now hit S and select Extruded Boss Base. I would like to extrude this as a cylinder. The direction to be mid-plane and the overall length to be 30. Hitting enter. And uh, let's create another circle. Let's head back to our first uh, sketch, which is sketch one. Let's edit this sketch. Let me zoom in. I'm going to hold my right mouse button and uh, move to the right to create a circle. Placing our center point at the origin, left click, hit S, and select Smart Dimension. I want the distance between these two circles to be 2 millimeters. Hitting Escape, and let's exit out of this sketch and update our pin. Hitting S, let's extrude once more, selecting Extruded Boss Base, selecting this circle, and under Direction, changing this to Mid-Plane, Overall Length. In addition, this will serve as a stopper. Let's key in 20, hitting Enter, and hit Enter once more. Recall we have turned off the visibility of the bodies. Notice Boss Extrude 4 merged with Extrude 3 to form Boss Extrude 4 body. Heading back to isometric view, Control 7. Let's create the hinge. And uh, take note, our shaft will be piercing through this hinge, let's hit S for SolidWorks shortcut keys, selecting Extruded Boss Base, selecting this circle. Under Direction, changing this to Mid-Plane and Distance to be 30, hitting Enter, hitting Enter once more. Hitting S, selecting Extruded Boss Base. Let's extrude this circle, changing the direction to mid-plane. Length to be 20. And hitting Enter. In this moment, we will not be creating the hole here. And that one will be created when this body is finally turned into a part. Let me turn on the visibility of the rest of the bodies. Left click Boss Extrude 1, Holding Shift. Left click on Revolve 3. Selecting Show. And for the pin and hinges on this positions, we are simply going to create a copy of this two bodies. So selecting Boss Extrude 4 and Extrude 6. Adding up under Direct Editing tab. Selecting Move Copy Bodies. Making sure Copy is 
ticked or enabled. Let's move this somewhere around here. Selecting the green check mark. And because we have the support, which has a thickness of a two millimeters, we are going to move this uh, two faces by that value. So let's set up to direct editing once more, selecting move a face, selecting this two faces, moving this arrow to the left to be exact, keying in two, hitting enter, enter once more, repeat that command, selecting move a face, selecting this face and this face, moving this arrow to the right, keying in two for the distance. Hitting enter, control seven for isometric view. And those are the rest of the bodies that will be needed to turn this multi-body part into a dynamic assembly. With all bodies in place, let's now turn all of these bodies into parts. And to do that, we're going to head up to insert under features, moving down, and selecting save bodies. We are now prompted to select a body that may head over to our resulting parts. Left click here, so notice it highlights this body. I'm going to double left click on this. And I would like to name this as support. Hitting enter. Next. Selecting number two. Notice it highlights this body, which will serve as the arm. Heading back, double left click on none, and let's save this as arm. Hitting enter for number three. Let's name this a new part as double left click, hinge dash A. Heading to number four, double left click on none. Naming this uh, pin to be pin B, hitting enter for number five. This will be our shaft, naming this as shaft, hitting enter for number six. This will be pin dash A for number seven. This will be Hinge dash B, hitting enter, leaving the defaults here, and uh, finally selecting the green check mark. And if this window appears, simply select yes seven times. And uh, let me show you the list of uh, parts uh, created. Notice hinge, a pin, shaft, arm, and a support. With the bodies now saved as parts, we can now head up and create a new assembly. Double left click on this. And from here, let me show you the extracted files. I can left click and hold and drop support in place. Selecting the green check mark. Now the downside of a saving bodies, notice as we head back to our multi-body part, let's say we have a design change. Let me head over to sketch one, selecting edit sketch. Let's say 50 was modified to 80 and Leaving the sketch, notice, as we head back, hitting control tab to the imported support part, 
the distance still with these two holes is still 50. This means if we utilize a save a bodies, the linkage between the sketch and the saved part are now broken. Let me hit escape and I close this window out, selecting don't save. Let us go back in time before we perform the save buddies. I'm going to head over to our design tree and notice this blue line. I'm going to left click and hold and move this up on a save a buddies one release. So notice I have suppressed this command. A better option would be heading over now to Boss Extrude 1. I'm going to right click on this and finally select Insert into New Part. Let me select this ellipsis and save this one out this time as Support. Let me overwrite this existing part. Selecting yes and selecting the green check mark. Selecting yes. Let's head back to our multi part. And this time, let's re update our sketch one. Let's say this time to be 100. Hitting enter. Let's exit out of this sketch, hit control tab, and notice as I measure the distance between this hole and this hole, they are the same with the value indicated on our sketch one. So now, we now have a master part model. Let me head back to our sketch one and bring this back to 50. Exiting out of this sketch. Next, let's now save or insert all of this bodies into a new part. But first, let me copy our target location, hitting Control c selecting Boss Extrude 2, right-click, selecting Insert into New Part. Let's uh, place this on this location. This one to be Arm, hitting Enter, selecting the green check mark, selecting Yes, heading back to our master part model. And you may be wondering what if we select multiple bodies and insert them into a new part. I'm going to right click, insert into new part, and let's save this out as check. Hitting enter, selecting the green check mark, selecting yes, and notice we need to select and insert into new part each body. Let's close this out. Control F4. Hitting Control B to rebuild. Let's insert into new part the shaft, which is represented by revolve. Right click, selecting insert into new part. Naming this as shaft. Hitting enter, right click, selecting OK, selecting yes, control tab, selecting boss, extrude four, right click, insert into new part. Let's name this as pin A, right click, selecting OK, selecting yes. Control tab. Let's finish this one out. Selecting Boss Extrude 6, right click, 
selecting insert into new part let's name this as hinge dash a hitting enter right click selecting ok selecting yes control f4 next selecting move a face of four right click selecting insert into new part naming this as pin dash b right click selecting ok let's don't show this again and uh, finally selecting move a face four right click insert into new part let's uh, name this as hinge dash b right click selecting ok control tab hitting control b okay so moving forward we are now about to create a new assembly document and bring over our newly created parts okay so in addition shout out to Jenaline Contreras Alduvino yes uh, for inviting you friends uh, to join us in this live stream training shout out also to our JPSME Batanga State University once more, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Let me turn you over to Rafaela uh, to give us a uh, short message about uh, PSME Paranaque. Hi everyone, I'm Rafaela Villarente and you can call me Raf and I am a proud member of PSME Paranaque and I am inviting all the mechanical engineers colleagues out there and to all professionals out there to join PSN Parniake. You can drop us a message on Facebook. It's PSN Parniake and just type it in Facebook and you'll be able to see our Facebook message and leave us a message and tell us why you want to join PSN Parniake and how you want to take, how do you want to take part in it. So ayun, you're, you're maybe thinking why this person is very eager to make us join this organization. So, being a part of PSNI Paranaque and being staying in the organization for a while, so there are three things that I I want to share with you why I stayed. So, first is family, second is innovation, and third is impact. So, first, it's like a family. So, parang it's very uh, welcoming in your part if you have those people that you share uh a common goal with. You share and brainstorm your ideas and your similar ideas and your common goals into that organization. But it feels you make, it makes you feel very welcome and it gives you a, a sense of sense uh, of satisfaction and a sense of a uh, good feeling na well I have this people pala in my life and alam mo yon uh, uh, um they can assist me, they can support me in everything that I do, especially with mechanical engineering uh, ideas or mechanical engineering works or whatever it is that involves mechanical engineering. So they are the people, just like your family, they are, they are the people, they are the people that can help you or support you and guide you and share with you ideas na related into mechanical engineering. So, yun. So it's a family. It's a very accepting family because no hassle and no pressure. I mean, it's a, a willingness and a voluntary act na when you join PSME Paranaque, it's more of uh, having a new set of friends. So if you want to have new set of friends, you should join PSME Paranaque. So it's just not about family. So if you... Uh, take a look into it. If you share the ideas, the common goals, the similarities among the organization, uh, you, do not, you do not want to stop there. You want that ideas or idea to put it into something great or to put it into action. So, just more passive your innovation. Uh, we share uh, common interests, common similarities, common goals. And with that, we, we make those ideas into something great by putting them into action. We implement those ideas with our wider connections 
uh, being in PS Anytime Yaki, it will open doors for you to different uh, fields, hindi lang sa mechanical, but sa related sa mechanical, could be uh, branches of mechanical engineering, could be CAD, or could be power plant, and whatsoever that's related to mechanical engineering. So, it will open doors for you to help that create idea to be put into actions and to be implemented. So, yun. So, after the impact, so after putting your idea into uh, innovation, the third is the tinatawag natin impact. So, impact. Uh, after putting your idea into uh, action, syempre, you wanted to see the result eh. So, uh, dun pumapasok yung impact. So, being in a common goal, sharing your common goal, your similarities, your great ideas, and putting them into action with connecting with different types of organization and branches of mechanical engineering to be able to impact the society. You see your results by uh, getting uh, good uh, good feedbacks from the society, the community, uh, by helping, by servicing, by making a change. Alam mo yun, uh, you see that there's uh, a change with that simple idea. And I think being able to put things into action and to see that your actions is very relevant, I think that's uh, uh, that's, a, that's a great goal. And I hope every one of you, we share a common goal and maging isa tayo dun sa common goal na yon, that is to put your ideas, whatever it is, whatever it is na super random and everything, you're very welcome here in Yes, Alipanyake. And let's put that idea into into uh, action by putting innovations into it. Kulayan natin yung drawing na yan. So, yun. And then, let's see uh, what impact we can bring into society. So, yun. I hope every one of you can join Yes, and if I you just drop us a mes- message in Facebook. So, see you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so once more, thank you so much, uh, Miss uh, Rafaela Llorente. So, okay, I'm flashing here uh, the Facebook page of uh, PSME Paranaque Chapter. So, uh, inviting you also to uh, join this join this chapter. Okay. So let's uh, now go back to SOLIDWORKS. Okay, let's now go the extra mile. I'm going to hit Control N to create a new SOLIDWORKS document, specifically a new assembly. Double left click on this. Next, let's start to bring over pin A first. Selecting the green check mark. Next, I'm going to hit Control S to save this uh, new document. Selecting Save All and selecting Rebuild and Save the document. Saving this on my preferred location and naming this as ASI dash hold down clamp. Hitting enter. And one of the best of practice when creating new parts is to make sure that the origin is situated at the center. Let's select pin A, selecting open part, and clicking on origin. So notice it's at the center. Control tab to head back. Let's bring in another part, hitting S and selecting insert components. Let's scroll down, looking for support, left click, moving over to our graphics area. And I prefer placing it here, left click. Next, I'm going to select this face and this face, holding control to select them both, hitting S and selecting mate. 
Accepting the default, which is concentric. Selecting the green check mark. Next, let's add another mate, selecting this face and the face of our pin A. Accepting coincident mate, selecting the green check mark. And finally, let me head over to support, selecting top plane and the top plane of our parent assembly. Holding control and accepting the default coincident mate. Selecting the green check mark, hitting enter. Next, let's add a spice of a sheet metal. Heading over to support and selecting open part. Now, if you don't have a sheet metal tab, just head over to a blank space Right-click under Tabs, Enable Sheet Metal. Heading over to Convert to Sheet Metal. Prompted to select a fixed entity, I prefer this face. Right-click, selecting OK, leaving the defaults. Next, let's add an edge of flange. Selecting this command, selecting this edge, and to be exact, I'm going to key in 40 and hitting enter. Looking nice. And hitting control tab to head back to our assembly. Let's move forward by creating another support. And to do that, let's simply mirror out support as a component. Heading over to Assembly tab and under this drop-down, we're going to select Mirror Components. Prompted to select a mirror plane, let me twirl this down and select our right plane and the components to mirror will be Support. So selecting Support, left-click, Next, we're going to select this arrow and select Create Opposite Hand Version. Right-click and selecting OK and select Save All. Let's now insert the arms, hitting S, selecting Insert Component, Selecting arm, placing this one here, and creating another duplicate of or instance of the arm. So what I did is I uh, simply hover over this component, hold control, left click and hold to create another instance. Let's add mates, hitting S, selecting mate, selecting this face, and this face, accepting concentric, hitting enter. Next, I want this face and this face to be coincident, hitting enter. Let's inspect. So let's repeat that step. This time to this arm, selecting this face and this face, accepting concentric, selecting this face and this face. Hitting enter. Let's inspect. And hitting Enter once more. Let's now bring in Hinge A. Hitting S, selecting Insert Component. Selecting Hinge A. Dropping this part here. Next, I want to bring in the shaft as well. Hitting S, 
Selecting insert component. Let's bring in the shaft. And head over to evaluate. I want to measure the diameter of the cylinder, which is eight millimeters. What we're going to do next is create a hole on our hinge. Let me head over and select hinge A. Let's open that part. In addition, notice our origin is not located or coincident with the center mass of our hinge A. Let me head over to this uh, drop down and turn on view origins. So notice origin is located below. Our uh, next intent is to move that origin here at the center. To do that, I want you to head over to direct editing, selecting move uh, copy bodies body to move is this body. Next, under mate settings, I'm going to select concentric, selecting this cylindrical face, holding control, and selecting origin. Notice it's now at the center. Right click, selecting OK. Recall, the diameter of the cylinder is 8 millimeters, and that will go through this hinge. Let's now create that sketch. Heading over to top plane, selecting sketch. I'm going to hold my right mouse button and a move to the right to grab our circle command. Let's place the center point at the origin, left click, hit S, and select Smart Dimension, a diameter for this to be 8, hitting Enter, Enter once more, and let's exit out of this sketch. Let's now create a circular cut extrusion, hitting S, selecting Extruded Cut. Selecting this circle, heading over to direction, changing this to through all both, and hitting enter. In addition, before we create the thread here, I prefer adding chamfers. So selecting this edge and this edge, heading up to direct editing, selecting chamfer. The value, I'm going to key in 1, hitting enter. To create the thread, we need to have a plane first. Let's uh, switch uh, tabs, heading over to features. Under reference, selecting plane. Let me select the face of the cylinder. For the first reference and for the second reference, let me head over to our design tree and select top plane. Next, for the second reference, I'm going to enable at angle and I'm going to key in 360. Looking nice, selecting the green check mark. Let's now insert the thread, heading over to Insert under Features and the Selecting Thread. Hitting the spacebar, Thread Location, let me zoom in, select this edge. And for our next reference, it will be the newly created plane. For the end condition, let's uh, key in 20, inspecting, 
And uh, for the type, it will be a metric tap. The size to be, since it's 8 millimeters in diameter, we're going to select M8 by 1. Leaving the defaults, I'm going to right click and to select OK. Let's head back to our assembly, hitting Control Tab, zoom in. I'm going to select this cylinder or that face, this face, hit S, selecting Mate, accepting Concentric, hitting Enter. Let me add this face as well. So selecting these two faces, hitting enter. And finally, let me head over and select our right plane and twirl hinge A down, select its right plane as well. Mate type, coincident. Hitting enter. Let's check. Moving forward, let's now apply the thread on this shaft and add the hole for hinge B. Let's now focus on the shaft. Selecting the shaft, selecting open part, heading up to insert. Under Features, let's select Thread. Target the Thread Location. I'm going to select this circular edge. And for the End Condition, let's change this to Up To Selection. And that selection will be up to this circular edge. For the type, changing this to metric tap. For the size, let's make sure this is M8 by 1. Lastly, for the thread method, changing this to extrude thread and selecting the green check mark. Let's head back to our assembly. Moving forward, let's bring in hinge B. Hit S, selecting Insert Component. Let's uh, select Browse. And uh, selecting Hinge B, selecting Open. Placing this part here. Hit S, let's now apply Mates. Select this face and this face. Accept Concentric Mate. Same with this face and this face, accepting concentric mate. And uh, finally, let's select our right plane. Head over to hinge B and select its right plane as well. Accepting coincident, hitting enter, and enter once more. We're nearly done. Let's check the diameter of this cylinder. Heading over to evaluate, selecting measure, selecting this face, diameter to be 5. Let's close this out. Open up hinge B, and let's create an extrude cut with a diameter of 5 millimeters. But first, let me inspect. So notice here, our origin is way down our solid body. So let's move that. Let me first turn on the visibility of our origins. Head over to Direct Editing. Selecting a Move, Copy Bodies, Body to Move is this only body. And for the Mate Settings, I'm going to select Concentric, selecting this circular face and our origin. Hitting Enter. 
And enter once more. And uh, finally, let's create that circular sketch, selecting top plane, selecting sketch, hitting S, and uh, selecting circle. Let's create that uh, five millimeter diameter circle, hitting S, selecting smart dimension, and uh, making this to five, hitting enter. And let's exit out of this sketch. Hit S, selecting Extrude Cut. Let's change the direction to Through All Both. And hitting Enter. And I prefer adding a chamfer as well to this two edges. Selecting Chamfer. And value to be 1. Hitting enter and uh, let's head back to our assembly. Let's wrap things up and uh, bring in the missing pieces. I'm going to hit S and let's insert components. Let me browse through that uh, missing part. Selecting pin B, placing this one here. And hit S once more, selecting Mate, selecting this face, and this face, accepting the default concentric Mate, selecting this face, and this face, accepting concentric. And uh, finally, let's select our right plane and the right plane of the pin B. Selecting right, accepting coincident, selecting the green check mark, hitting enter. Let's now insert our shaft to the hinges. Let me rotate this hinge first. Let's insert mates, hitting S, selecting mate. And let me zoom in here on the thread of the shaft, selecting this face. Next, for us to easily select the cylindrical surface for hinge A, I'm going to change the visibility of our assembly to wireframe. Zooming in, this is our target cylindrical face. I'm going to right click, selecting select other, and let's cycle through. And uh, this is the target face, accepting concentric mate, hitting enter. Let's revert back to our display style, which is shaded with edges. Next, selecting this cylindrical face and this cylindrical face. Hitting enter, and enter once more, and let's check. Congratulations! From a skeleton sketch, you have created a dynamic assembly coming from a multi-body part. Let's recall and bring in our multi-body part, hitting Control tab I'm still holding Control, selecting 06 Begin, and let's check if we revise this dimension. So I'm heading over to Sketch 1, selecting Edit Sketch. Let me change this to 80. Let's exit out of this sketch. Hitting Control Tab. Notice it's updating. Let's check if our assembly updated to what the new multi-body part is. 
selecting measure, selecting these two cylinders. Notice both of them are at 80 millimeter distance. Congratulations, and that's modeling multi body part in SolidWorks. Great job. Okay, so once more, thank you so much uh, for all uh, who joined us uh, this evening. Maraming maraming salamat po. Uh, so once more, um, inviting you uh, to unite with us uh, in SolidWorks uh, Users uh, Philippines for you to be updated on our upcoming live stream uh, training. Okay, so once more, flashing you also, um, don't forget to complete uh, the course. Okay, all instructions are uh, here. Okay, pasting also now the link for you to join uh, the instructions on how to claim the certificates are also here. So once more, uh, register and enroll in this course now while it's uh, still free. And again, uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us uh, this evening. Thank you to all our partners, student organizations. Okay, so again, if you have uh, questions, comments, suggestions, uh, feel free to reach out to me in uh, LinkedIn. Okay, so once more, thank you so much to our uh, partner organizations. Okay, and uh, see you next time for another SolidWorks Users uh, Philippines uh, CAD training.
The Wacom has always been a great tool for design, but now it's great for CAD too. I'm Mark McCauley. I'm a design engineer and a partner at the Center for Advanced Design. I'm interested in how things work, how things are assembled, how to wrap a prototype, how to design the tooling, make the molds, and ultimately produce the parts. Switching to pen navigation was easy. After an initial learning curve, it sped up my workflow because working with a pen on a screen was faster, easier, and more intuitive. The biggest challenge to our workflow is time. We're always looking for ways to speed up our process. The Walkmanson Peak Pro helps improve my speed and productivity. It has features like the Express Key Remote. The Express Key Remote has a ton of hotkeys, which allow me to program shortcuts within SolidWorks. The Wacom Pro Pen 3D was designed for CAD users. It provides full navigational control in CAD applications like SolidWorks, completely replacing a mouse. It has a fine tip for precise sketching, selecting points, navigating menus, or even handwriting dimensions. The three customizable pen buttons enable you to pan, zoom, or rotate your model. Navigating with the ProPen 3D increases my speed and accuracy. It's lightweight and designed to feel comfortable in my hand for hours. Drawing directly on the screen makes me feel more connected to my work. It feels more natural than using a mouse. My work involves moving around a lot to collaborate with my team or with my customers. With Mobile Studio Pro, I can work, design, or present anywhere. Wacom has created the most natural, comfortable, and productive way to work in CAD. With the Wacom Cintiq Pro and ProPen 3D, I found endless amounts of productivity, comfort, and connectiveness. What more do you need?